We are not. Last night, the President took an important symbolic step in accepting the resignation of Acting IRS Commissioner Miller. I had called for this resignation on Monday when we learned that Mr. Miller signed his name to one, if not more, letters that we now know could, couldn't possibly have been truthful, couldn't possibly have been truthful. But let's be clear, this symbolic step was just that, symbolic. What Americans want right now are answers about what happened at IRS, why it wasn't disclosed earlier, who was ultimately accountable for this behavior, and assurances that this kind of thing isn't going to go on at the IRS or anywhere else in the federal government. Because the allegations of ideological targeting only continue to multiply. It's continuing to multiply. This morning, I'd like to focus on just one of those incidents. It's the case of a group called the National Organization for Marriage. Last May, Senator Hatch, the top Republican on the Finance Committee, sent a letter to the IRS inquiring about reports that someone, someone at the IRS had leaked confidential donor information from NOM, the National Organization for Marriage, to an advocacy group whose political goals were in direct conflict with its own. NOM has since released documents suggesting that this information came from one source, from within the IRS itself. All this took place, by the way, in the middle of a national political campaign. Significantly, one of NOM's donors whose name was leaked was none other than Mitt Romney. What a coincidence. And what about the group it was leaked to? Well, it was headed by a guy who was named a national co-chair of the Obama campaign and who published the confidential donor information on the website of the organization he ran, an organization opposed to the goals of NOM. So here's another situation, at the very least, clearly merits investigation. There are allegations here that someone at the IRS committed a very serious crime that had the effect of chilling the speech of a political organization that happened to be on the wrong side of the current administration. Yet a year later, Senator Hatch has yet to hear anything back from the IRS. And according to the folks at NOM, neither have they. Last year, the people at NOM say they brought their concerns about this potentially illegal activity to the IRS and the Justice Department. They say they even hired a forensic specialist to prove that the document that was leaked had originated right at the IRS. According to NOM, the forensic guy knew the document came from the IRS because it bore a watermark distinctive to the agency. And they say they had to hire him, get this, because the IRS asked NOM if they had leaked the information themselves. How about that? So they say they provided evidence to show that they hadn't leaked it themselves. And then earlier this year, they asked the IRS to release all the information about their complaint, which had apparently reached a complete dead end over at the IRS. And here's what they say they got back, crickets. They say they haven't heard a thing from the IRS or the DOJ about this potentially illegal breach of their confidential donor information, even as they've poured significant resources of their own into the investigation and, according to them, seen some of their supporters scared off. Think about that. The IRS hasn't had the time to respond to this group or to the Finance Committee for that matter, a full year after their confidential donor information appears to have been leaked from inside the IRS to one of NOM's ideological opponents. But when the liberal group, ProPublica, requested confidential information about conservative groups, why, the IRS got right back to these folks with the information they wanted in about two weeks. Two weeks. 
This is exactly the kind of thing I've been warning about for more than a year. Here's a group with an agenda that runs counter to that of the administration. Somebody over at IRS gets a hold of their donor list and leaks it to their opponents. Why? So anybody who thinks about supporting them thinks twice. That's why. This is what government intimidation and harassment looks like, my colleagues. It's completely unacceptable. And the idea that you've got to move heaven and earth to get somebody in the federal government to lift a finger to get to the bottom of it is genuine, is a genuine outrage. This is the kind of thing that people should be tripping over themselves to resolve. Yet Senator Hatch is still waiting on a response to a letter he sent to the IRS commissioner last May. No one should be intimidated by the government into shutting us up as part of our political process. And that's why the Republican members of the Finance Committee are sending a letter today to the Treasury's Inspector General for Tax Administration requesting investigation into this very issue. Because without this sort of inquiry, we may never have confirmed the inappropriate harassment of conservative groups that was going on at the IRS for two years. Two years. Apparently, this is the only way to get this administration to take responsibility for its actions. Well, we're determined to do that because this is a very dangerous precedent being set here. I'll say it again. Americans, be they conservative or liberal, should be free to participate in the political process without fear of harassment or intimidation from their very own government. 